to find domain and range, let me write it like this. Uh, Square. This is function of x. This is uh, this you you should read out. F of x is function of x, and the function is given by this like this. Do you know how to find domain and range? No, you don't have any idea. Let let, let them solve and. Uh, Again, I, I, see, it's you guys who have to take advantage of me, not me. Okay, I'll just come, otherwise I'll, I'll take my class and I'll leave. If you have problem, you ask the author to take the, ask me for exceptions. Only then I'll be taking it. I cannot take it five minutes. It's not up to me, the extra class. So uh, whatever portion you have missed, just ask Raghav that if you want to cover that as well. So deeply if you can get an extra class. So I'll start from six, but one time only. And uh, till now, you focus on domain and range. After this, we are going to start trigonometry. So from there, I, I think everything will be fine. When is your test in the school? You're done? How, many, what's the, how much domain? What is domain? See, domain we write like domain of function P of f. You can write like this. All real numbers minus. Minus this. Okay, we use as curly bracket. That's why I'm writing curly bracket. So this this is called parenthesis or small bracket. Minus two, two. Is this correct? How much you got? How last class we have done domain only, right? So please don't say that you won't be able to find the domain. Come, come, come. Same, you have got same. What are you doing? How much you got? This? Yeah, and what's the range? Okay, let's solve the domain. Okay, good. you have test tomorrow? Okay. So this, uh, I think range only we are missing, right? So we'll cover a range. Range is not a big deal. And in your NCRT, I don't know. Uh, we'll cover all types of range. Just you guys pay attention and just let me know. See, how do we find a domain? See, to find a domain, this x is what? Independent variable, right? Y, this, uh, y is equal to f of x. That's how we write. So y is here what? Dependent variable. Okay. The meaning of this function, f of x, it means y is a function of x. Okay. So when, uh, for now, from uh, as of now, you understand like this. And uh, one thing I want to mention to you guys also, I realize it later that effects of default. When we'll be studying continuity and differentiality, that time we'll be talking about that. 
for now just uh, leave it so x is your domain all the possible values of x what you can get is your domain okay and corresponding to that value of x whatever value of y you are getting is all right so this is your domain and this is range although this is not completely true theek okay? hai this is not always true domain this is just for real value function that's what we are studying all right so uh, now now uh, see this problem can you find this domain and range do that then why why you doing that don't don't wait for me to solve i am solving for you here and how can you make a mistake see when when this function must be defined in f of x will has to be real right that's what we are studying no real value function f of x has to be real anything in the and f of x is equal to this value if this value inside this value it is lesser than minus 1 so generally an imaginary number is denote uh, is uh, sorry 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 iota iota it it defines imaginary number i o t a okay and this is defined as square root of negative 1 so this will be an imaginary number but we are studying real number so this function this function has to be real okay so what will be the condition x can take any value other than should not be lesser than lesser than what zero lesser than zero it's not possible ha uh, it should not be that means For, okay, let me write it like this. this. So f of x must be real. Okay. So for f of x has to be real. What uh, this four minus x square should be greater than equal to zero. Not this. Inside inside square root everything. Four minus x square has to be greater than or equal to zero. Means this value, if it is zero, it should not be less than. That is the condition. You can also write this as four minus x square should not be less than what zero. Sorry, it should not be less than zero. The meaning is same. Both the meanings are same, right? Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll solve for it. Now this. Let's solve this function. Okay. This four uh, minus x square should be greater than equal to zero. If this condition is satisfied, then this f of x will be real every time. So four minus x square is greater than equal to zero. This is what we are solving. Now what we can do? We can subtract four both sides. Okay. So if we subtract four both sides, can I write like this? Minus four. Minus four. Is it okay for you guys? This much so you can understand because this. Uh, Yeah, we we should not put minus because this is plus four, right? That's why we are subtracting minus four here. So what will this become? X minus x square should be greater than equal to minus four, right? And if we multiply a minus one on both sides, what will happen? The sign will change. Okay. So x square should be if we are multiplying negative one on both sides should be lesser than equal to four, right? This you guys can understand. See. I'll, I'll just give you the same example that I gave to this piece, right? Two is greater than one, right? Two, two, two is greater than one. Is, is it fine? Now, if I multiply minus one, so minus two is greater than minus one. Is it true? Is minus two greater than minus one? Yes or no? No, right? So whenever you multiply negative, you have to multiply both sides. If you multiply minus one both sides, you have to change inverse the sign. Okay, so if it is lesser than, it will become greater than, like that. So that's what only we are doing because x is a real number. We are studying only for real numbers. Okay, we are not studying imaginary number right now or complex numbers. So for x square, now from here you will find critical points. Find what is critical point? The two values of x. You just for you have got this equation. Now you put x square is equal to four. Whatever you are getting. So what two values will get? X will be equal to plus or minus two, plus and minus two, right? Two values will get of x from here. Is that fine? Okay with you guys? If you have any doubt, please let me know. All right. So, uh, so, अच्छा in your school have they taught how to draw graphs of these functions? 
yes or no yes fine so from see if you can draw the graph from directly directly you can write it from there also from there also you can directly write this is range and this is domain okay no no issues so first then what we will do we'll plot the number line the real this is the real axis okay and we'll just mark the critical points so minus 2 2 all right now just check take any value greater than this to the right side is greater than so if you put any value that like is plus up to x and then uh, because it is easier to find out that's the only reason i'm putting you can put any number greater than 2 or even 3 let's put 2 first if you put 2 here so 2 square is how much 4 that is 4 is uh, equal to 4 it says it should be lesser than or equal to right So that means four is equal to that. That means we will include this two. Fine. That means close bracket will be using it. What? How about minus two? Negative two. What will happen? If you put minus two here, what do you get? Four. That means this is also included, right? So minus two is also included. Now take any value like right? let's say ten or hundred. Any value because it is greater than two. Yeah, that's why we have marked the critical point. So ten. If you put ten square, is how much? Hundred is hundred uh, less than equal to four? No, right? That means this is incorrect. This interval we are not taking. Take minus ten. Minus ten. If you put uh, here, how much you get? Hundred. Ashwin, you are getting it. Minus ten square is how much? Negative ten square. This minus ten square is how much? It's hundred, right? Just be allowed. It. Be a little allowed, and don't don't worry. Ask your doubt if you have any doubt. Don't be scared. So this is hundred. So that again, hundred is uh, what is is it lesser than four? No, right? Hundred is greater than four. That means this interval also you won't. Okay. So you you have only this interval left. So in between minus two and two, you have zero also, right? The sign is changing, right? That means zero has to be there. Put zero. Zero square is how much? Zero. Zero is lesser than four, right? That means this interval is always true. So you have this interval. And how do we write this interval? Ah, huh? Burli. So first, because we are finding all the values of x, that means we are finding domain. So domain of the function f is equal to how much? Minus two, two, two. Why we are using this bracket? This bracket means we are including Negative two as well as two. Okay. If we put parentheses minus two, two. That means we are not including minus two and two. We will include all the values in the middle of minus two and two, but not minus two and two. Is it clear? How you will find the range? So this is domain. Okay. What about range? How do we find it? How you will find it? Don't tell me the value. Why for which x is given? Okay, and for which x is defined actually. Okay, now see we the given equation was f of x is equal to square root of x. Sorry, what was that? Four minus. Okay, so this is this I have already said this is y is equal to f of x. That's what we are writing. Here. All right. Yes or no? Any doubt at all? Hopefully no doubt, right? Now what you will do? Here, see, x, uh, y is expressed in terms of x, right? Now what we will do is find all the possible values of y. What we will do? We will express x in terms of y. Okay. So first, right? Y is equal to square root of four minus x square. Now we will square both sides, so we can write y square will be equal to four minus x square. Fine. Now, uh, now what we can do? We can take this negative x square to le left hand side. Sorry, right hand side, and this to this side. Is that fine? You know how to do that, right? I don't have to teach that thing, and I'm not going to do that. X square will be equal to four minus y square. Is that fine? Yes or no? Ashwin, is it okay? What I'm writing here? Tell me, you are understanding or not? Are you sure? I am not sure. That's why I am asking you. You are getting it, Sham. Hello. 
now now we have we need x only right so what we will do x will be equal to square root of this x is equal to square root of 4 minus y square and this is positive as well as negative right it can be positive as well as negative but you have x has to be x you have already defined see? this is the possible values of x. all right this is the only possible values of x what we can get and corresponding to these value of x we need to find y you cannot find any y okay for this problem for this problem if you if you try to define x this that means x is real and you will try to find the value of y like we did it before so what you will get again you will get a critical point or let's draw like this for better understanding because we are finding y so this is y axis right and this is your negative 2 2 because again you will get put now minus 4y square has to be greater than or equal to 0 that's what you will do here to define right is it fine now from here again you will find the critical point that y is equal to plus or minus 2 so that's what i have written directly here because it's the same equation what we had got now see here again where y will be defined y is defined only in these intervals okay now this is not your range i know y is defined here y is defined here but this is not your range y can be one like but for, for sure it is not the range you cannot be sure about this how you will define the range you have to check with respect to the values of x okay suppose if any value of x you are substituting in this equation and it is not accepting the value of y in from minus 2 to 2 that means that is not your range we will have those type of problems for here let's try to find out if you put x is equal to minus 2 right domain that's what we have got domain minus 2 to 2 right so if you put minus 2 what you are getting y is equal to 0 and if you put x is equal to 2 again you are getting y is equal to what 0 fine that means all the values inside x or and maximum value also you need to find out where the function is going to be maximum so just analyze this thing 4 minus y square okay what can be the maximum value of y it, it should not be greater it should not be less than 0 right that means if you put y is equal to 0 then see whenever you have a function like fx minus gx okay let's say fx is constant here or gx is of y gx has to be least so that this function can be uh, can have the highest value let's say h of x h of x is maximum when g of x is least okay and this value possible is what for this this because if you put minus 2 also if you put minus 2 or minus 3 what will happen it is it will get squared okay and it will be positive so again it will be what it will become greater than this 4 okay so the least possible value here is 0 okay so if you put x y is equal to 0 what you will get if you put uh, sorry yeah y is equal to 0 how much you will get x is equal to plus or minus 2 right plus that's what you will get no plus or minus 2 okay that means it is these are all real numbers so the range of y range of function range of the function will be equal to what minus 2 to 2 fine that that's how you will define range properly okay you cannot just directly find the value of y and say that is your range that is the code only that is not range that's why here i said here it's not exactly true range this is true the domain is true, but this may not be true because this is always you will find the four domain. Then you have to relate x uh, with respect to y. Then only you can say, okay, this is your domain. Have you understood this thing? What? How 
Five has to be greater than zero. See, the problem is uh, why is it, why is the square root of this thing? That means y has to be greater than zero. So then again you will take the intersection part. <clears throat> so again you will take the intersection with what? Y is it y has to be greater than zero. Y should be greater than zero. Greater than or equal to zero, right? So you will take intersection with this. So what you will get? Range of the function will be equal to zero to Is it, is, it, is it complicated or is it clear? Not for you because you are attending the first class of things. Are you guys, do you understand this thing? Why we have to take this intersection? See, you do not write like this. If you want to write, write in set builder form. I, I try to, I'm just trying to explain it. See, the given problem is y is equal to square root of 4 minus x square. That means y has to be greater than 0. Okay, it cannot take value lesser than 0. But that's what, uh, if you are taking the value lesser than zero, it will not remain function. It will be just a relation. That's what we had discussed. Right? right? That's what we have discussed. Can, can anyone plot the graph of this function? Yeah, Hari, you have any doubt? Why, why we are taking this, is it clear? Why it is not from minus two? That's what I said, no? You cannot define the value of y and say that is the relation. That is the code only. Minus 2, 2, 2 is the code only, but the images will always, is y has to be greater than 0. Okay, so that's why if you take the intersection of these two, you will get range of the function from 0 to 2. Can anyone plot the graph of this function? Graph means x, y, b. Okay, that's what. Uh, Yes, you have any doubt that has that has been my correction or you think that you get it extra marks. Huh? Yeah, what more than what you deserve, right? But everyone. If you have any doubt that how to solve the problem or actually that it works through can ask me that. How many of you plotted this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it? See, you, your domain is already given. No? Your domain is from minus 2 to 2, right? This is 0. Okay, let's see. You haven't practiced to plot the graph. I can understand that. Minus 1, let's say minus 2, 1, 2. That's what your domain is. Domain is from what? Minus 2 to 2. Range is from what? 0 to 2. That means range is what? Y value of y. So the graph will be above this line, right? Because below this line, y is negative. All right, you got it? You got the graph? You got the graph. Okay. So uh, what, what the function says, a range you have from zero to two. Let's say this is one and this is two, okay? So at just plot what you have. At x is equal to zero, the value of y is at x is equal to 2, value of y is 0. And same goes with negative 2, right? What happens if the value of x is negative 1? Huh? Root 3 is something around 1.732, right? So 1.7 close to here, right? This will be your root 3, somewhere around here. We don't exactly know. So, And it's a square root. And we know it, it has to be a curvature. Okay, it cannot be a straight line. So the graph will be something like it will attain the maximum value. Uh -oh. Okay. 
So this will be the graph of this function f of x. Now you see, you got it. Show me. Now you see, we can do the vertical line test. If you draw a vertical line anywhere, it will cut the graph only once. That means it's a function. If we are taking range from, uh, sorry, range minus two to three, minus two, let's say, that's what we had got here, no? The code over minus two to three. So what will happen? Again, it will make a circle, something like this. And if you draw a vertical line, then it will intersect the graph twice. One step, one step. So it will be just a range. It will not be a function. Sorry, yes, it will be a function. Okay, so function is a subset of relation. Okay. So if you have a set of relations, then function is just a subset of it. Means all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions. Got it? Yes or no? This is clear? Okay. I hope this is write down a function y is equal to just find domain and range of this function. Okay. Y, y is equal to f of x and that is equal to u minus x if okay and x minus one. This is a given function. Can anyone draw the graph? See, the power, the power of, highest power of x is what? One, right? Highest power of x is what? One, highest, or that means y is equal to two minus x or x minus one. That means it's a linear graph. Whenever you plot plot the graph, it will be a straight line because the power is one. Now, in the previous problem, y is equal to it was square root of the four minus x square, right? See, the highest power is what? So it will be a curvature. This power, we will study that in how to plot graphs, but just try to plot these two. This, this should be a straight line. Plot the graph. Can you do that? This Can anyone tell me what is the domain of this function? Huh? Everyone, biology, what's the domain of this function? Huh? Zero to? Zero to two in open intervals. See, the domain is already given. It is given. Even if it's not given, these things are not given, and only these two are given, either this or this, then the function is defined everywhere because you need to find that then. Here it's already here given where the function is given. It's already given. The value of x is already given from 0 to 2 open interval and 3 to 4 closed interval and union of these two. That will be the domain type. For this graph, I tell you the range. These both will be straight line. Okay, I, okay I'll do one. When x, y. So x value of x is already given uh, 0 to 4, right? 
So you don't have to go into negative side. Zero to four is given. Let's mark it all. One, two, somewhere three. And it doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to scale it. Just a rough sketch. That's what we said. Now, from zero to two, the function is two minus x. So if you put x is equal to zero, if you put x is equal to zero, what you are getting by two, right? If you put x is equal to two, what you will get? That means if x is equal to zero, what's the value of y? Two, right? So y will be somewhere around. Yes, 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 yes. We'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. First, you have to plot the graph. So let's do that. And if x is equal to two, y will be equal to zero. So it will be a straight line like this. What happens? Fine, but we will not include two and these two values, right? Now, is it okay? We are not see where it is open in double five. We are because the value of x cannot be zero or two. It will be a straight line, and we, we are using what open circle. That means what we are not including the value of two, also the value of zero. That's how we are going to find. Now, in between three to four, the value of x minus y. So, if you put x is equal to three. Is equal to zero, how much you get? Two. And if you put x is equal to four, how much you get? Three. So if we put x is equal to three, the value of y is two. Two. This is the two line of two. Somewhere around here. And this is this we are including, right? See the equality sign is there. Fine. Now if x is equal to four, what is the value? Three. So if x is equal to four, the value is three. Something like this. Is that fine? Now, now is it okay? See the domain you you are defining. The domain is what from zero to zero to two open interval because we are not taking so right now domain of function will be equal to zero to two open intervals union what three to four right? because the function is defined in between three to four. So union three to four closed interval. Sorry. Three to four. Now, what is the range? That's what I wanted. This so anyone can do. What is the range of this function? Can anyone tell me the range of this function? What is the range? See, range is all the values of y that it can attain, right? So, see, y is going from zero to four. This uh, zero to three, right? This value is what? Three. This is uh, this is three. This is two. This is zero. Now see the value. We just need to see y. We don't have to see whether it is continuous or not. Yeah. Because we have already written the domain. Now zero at uh, from zero the value of y is sorry at x is equal to two the value of y is zero, right? So zero. So range of function f will be equal to zero to two. On zero you have open interval. Because you are not including the value of uh, at x is equal to two, at x is equal to two, it is not defined. And here it is. What type of bracket is this? First, write for this one. open interval. Let's write down that open interval. Union. Now this is two to three, right? Two to three. Union closed interval two to three. Fine. Is this okay? Now can we combine these two? Range of this function because it is at two it is continuous. At x is equal to zero, the value of is two, but we are not including two. But two is included here, right? So you can directly write from zero to. So the range of function is zero to three. At three you have a closed bracket, and at zero you have open bracket. So this is your range. Got it? That's how we are. If you can plot the graph, you can find the range of range and domain of any function. It's very easy, right? If you can plot the graph, yes or no? So shall shall we do one more problem? We have 15 minutes, and I'll leave you at exactly at the time because you have to practice. Okay, let's do another problem. F of x is equal to. Murli, you are understanding or not? X plus seven. If X is greater than equal to negative two and lesser than five. 
x square if x is greater than or equal to 5 and less than 7, 6 minus 2x, x is greater than or equal to 7. Now tell me what is the domain? Domain is defined there always. Can anyone tell me the domain? See, it is from minus 3 and greater than this. What is the domain? Domain. Yeah, see, I'm giving you some time. Yes. See, clearly, what's the meaning of this? Yes, this is x values domain. That's what I said. Now, see it properly and tell you what, what is your domain. Okay, do one thing, not the now. And then tell me domain intention. These two will be straight line because the power is maximum power is of one, this and this. But the maximum power there is what? So it will be a curvature. So what type of curvature? I don't know. Just try to plot. I think we have seen now y is equal to x square, how it looks like. Huh? But anyway, uh, you, you have to put x square only between 5 and 7. So just put x is equal to 5 and 7. And plot a rough graph, not the exact graph you don't want. I'll give you two minutes. Okay? Nobody? Everyone wants, wants to write test and practice for it. Let's see how much they get in test. Biology, you are staying here. That means you have to get more than anyone. See, there is no obligation. Just whatever you have Okay, so shall we do it? You will try it? At least try it. Try and fail. That's fine. Yeah. Where? You'll see a very interesting thing. Here. That's what I want to do. Shall we pl plot the graph? See, the graphs and everything. Everything, it's all about practice. If you don't practice, nobody is going to make a perfect graph in exam. And when you are writing competitive exam, let me tell you this thing. 30% of your problem will be solved using graph. If you know graph, you can solve it like this. Because you have options. So if you are taking competitive exams, so that will be really helpful. Even if uh, JE advanced, mostly see graphs uh, are really important if you are taking JE advanced exam. Till mains, so fine, it is fine. Because it will help you understand physics also, chemistry also. You can relate all the graphs to physics. So this is X and Y. See, X is we don't have to plot x in the what negative side, right? We don't need that because x is always greater than minus. 3. It's given minus three to five. So if let's write here minus three, okay, minus three. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you have to go in the negative direction. Minus three. So let's say minus three is here, and let's say five is there somewhere. So we already established that. This is a straight line. Why? Because, because what? To plot a straight line, you need only two points, right? Yeah, because the power is maximum power is one. Okay. So if you put x is equal to minus three, how much you are getting? Y. Four you will get now. So let's say if you put x is equal to minus three, y you are getting four. So this is y is four. If you put x is equal to 
five. How much you get? Five plus twelve. Let's say twelve is somewhere here. Okay. So if you put five, so this is twelve, right? So here. Is it open interval or closed interval? It is open interval, right? Why? Because equality sign is not there. Can you see? See, in x, x is all values, but it should be lesser than five. Up to five, all values. Even four point nine 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 infinite times of nine, but it will not take five. Okay, that's the meaning. So it's just a straight line, so we can plot it directly. And here we have closed interval. So straight line like this. Got it? Now what it says in between five and seven, the value of function. Let's say seven is somewhere here. Wait, wait, Murli. First, pay attention here. Now five to seven, right? You have x square. X is equal to five. How much will be y? See, x if x is equal to five, we will put here. This is the value of y. Y is equal to f of x is equal to this. When x is equal to five, so five. How much it will be? Twenty-five. So twenty-five will be let's say twenty-five is somewhere there, and it will be a closed interval. Of course, it's twelve. So I, I mean, please do not carry this. It is just a rough sketch. Okay, so twelve. Of course, twenty-five is not going to be there. It will be somewhere around there, right? Let's not do that. So this, let's say, this is twenty, uh, twenty-five, and by, and uh, if x is equal to seven, then what's the value of y? Forty-nine, huh? right? Forty-nine, no. So forty-nine. Let's say somewhere around here. Oof. Let's assume. Let's assume twenty-five is here, and this is here. What? This is what forty-nine. Y is equal to forty-nine, and it it has to be a curve. It has to be a curvature, okay? And we are considering this value because x is equal to less, uh, greater than equal to five, but lesser than seven. So this is open interval, right? Now, now again, this is a straight line. X six minus two x is a straight line. So you put x is equal to seven. What you are getting? Some negative value you will get, no? Put how much? Minus minus eight will you get, right? So if X is equal to seven. You get the value minus eight. This is open interval or closed interval. This is closed interval, no? Because x is equal to what? X is equal to seven. The value of x can x is equal to seven. So this function you get. Now, if x is equal to ten, what is the value of this? Any value you get, no? Because you need at least two points to plot the straight line, right? So if x is equal to seven and it has to be greater than seven, right? So if x is equal to ten, how much will you get? Six minus twenty uh, minus fourteen, right? So minus fourteen will be where? If you take ten, so minus fourteen will be down somewhere, like this, and it will keep going on. So we are just putting the arrow, and this arrow represents that it will keep going. On. Okay, it will not stop. We just uh, took this point because x is greater than seven. We can take any point. It's very long. Just because we need two points to plot a straight line, at least two points. Right? Just because we know the property of x square, it will be a curvature. That's why we have plotted like this. But you cannot plot the curve just using two points. I can give you two points. You cannot plot the curve. Okay, it's not possible unless you know how how what is what its nature is. So this is the graph. That we are looking for. Now, see from here. Can anyone tell me the domain? Murli, what is the domain of function? Domain is all the value of x. From where x is defined? Minus three. From here, everything onwards, right? So from minus three to infinity. Infinity is always open bracket, and this will be closed or open. Closed or open? Closed. Right? And a range. What will be the range of this function? Ah, uh, Hari. See from where to where. What is the maximum value of this function? What is the maximum value of y? Forty-nine, right? And it is 
see and see it is going to infinity it is going downwards towards infinity so from minus infinity to 49 is the range so minus infinity to 49 so 49 is closed bracket or open bracket see properly it is open bracket yeah minus what x is x is not equal to 7 so it is a open bracket okay so range is both open bracket did you understood or not you got it how graph can help you to understand domain and range a range a domain is all in the values of x range is all the value of y that a function can for which domain is defined okay that last point is really important for which domain is defined okay now this though i thought that you guys will be able to do but what's the interesting thing that i was talking about we have studied that indeed was the thing that i was i wanted to talk to you see for these are three different functions f g h let's say like that these are three different functions but see here if x is equal to 5 here x is not equal to 5 if you put x is equal to 5 here it will be a relation it will not be a function because suppose let's observe this graph only suppose if say x is equal to uh suppose if you are putting x is uh, lesser than equal to 7 that means it will take this value also right it will take this value also and if you draw a straight line here it will intersect at two points one to at 49 and one here right so if you draw a vertical line it will intersect at two points that's why whenever there is a function so it cannot be equal to x cannot take two values for different functions got it x plus 7 is from minus 3 to 5 and here 5 we are not including x is from 5 to 7 here we are including 5 either you can include 5 here or here if you are including 5 here you have to exclude it from here. okay that's the thing i wanted to talk about. here also x is not equal to 7 if you're taking x is equal to 7 that means it will follow this function not this function okay is it too much Ah, Ashwin, Ashwin, right? Okay. Don't worry. Well, so did you understand this thing? How graph can help you plot everything? Okay, let's. We have three minutes. If you want to go and study, you too. You have exam also. See, we are studying here, no? We are studying mathematics only. Modulus function. Let's discuss that. This is spelling, no? Am I incorrect? Uh, this is you, right? This will be you, no? M U M O D U L U S, right? Thanks. So, modulus function. What is modulus function? Suppose y is equal to modulus of x. Okay, we will define that. This is called modulus function. That means if you put modulus anywhere, that means all the values inside it will be positive. That means x can take either, if, if even if you take x is equal to minus 2, the value of y will be 2. If you take x is equal to 2, the value of y will be 2. So actually the function is defined like this. y is equal to uh, modulus of like this. Let's not write this one. Listen, listen. Let's not write this one. We will study about this later. Okay? The function I am just giving you, modulus function is defined like that. Let's understand this one first. Okay, don't write this thing. We will study this one in details. All right? What you are writing there, don't write this, huh? See, y will be equal to x if x is greater than 0 or equal to 0. Negative x if x is lesser than lesser than 0, not equal to. You can put equality sign anywhere. Why is it like this? Y is equal to x and y is equal to minus Because whenever the value of x is greater than 0, what you get the value? Let's, let's try to plot and try to understand this. Thing. X, Y. Okay. So if X, what I'm saying is X is greater than this side. That means from here to here. This side. Because X is always equal to Y only. Whatever the value of X you have, it's a straight line. Right? So if X is equal to 1, the value of Y will be also 1. If X is equal to 2, the value of Y will be 
So this is your, this is what? This is the, the this, this part, the top part. And we have also studied the Y has to be positive. Anyway, Y has to be positive. So if, if suppose, if X, if we are not writing negative, suppose if we are not writing negative, so what will happen if X is equal to minus one, you are taking. If X is equal to minus one, what is the value of Y? Minus one, no. I'm saying we are not, just don't uh, write like this. Okay, that means Y is equal to X. Okay. Y is equal to x. If you are taking x is equal to y minus one, what, what is y? Minus one. So it will be like this. It is not positive. No? So it will not follow the modulus relationship. So the meaning of modulus is even if you take negative value of x, that time also the output is positive. Right? It's a black box. If even if you put anything, anything you put positive or negative, it will always give out positive. That's what the definition of modulus function. That's why we have to define negative. Now, if you put minus one, right? Now put x is equal to minus one. How much you are getting? Minus into minus one is what? One. So it will be positive, right? One. Now put x is equal to minus two. What you are getting? Minus of minus two. How much is that? Two. You know this thing, right? Minus negative multiplied by negative is a positive number because we are talking about real numbers. We'll see other numbers later. Not now. Here we are only studying real numbers. You have to understand. X and Y value has to be real. It cannot be other than real. That's why we are also not including infinity. Open bracket we are putting. No, because infinity is not a real number. Okay. So now you now you got it. Y has to be positive in any case. That means Y has to be above this line. Y cannot be below this, below this line. Right? So in the negative direction also. You have like this, right? So if you take any value, let's say x is equal to minus three. If you put x is equal to minus three, how much will you get y? Plus three. You will always get y positive. That's how we. That's why we are defining here minus minus six. If x is lesser than zero, it will be defined negative x. So this is the graph of y is equal to modulus of x. That's how we are defining the modulus sum. Got it? See, whatever you are, just don't think about it. You don't know the concept before because we can directly learn from it. It's not like uh, some, you know, some equations, it's some navier stokes equation that we have to understand to mechanics first. Why I'm telling you this? Anyway, so, so everyone got this thing? Why, uh, how a modulus function is defined? Shall we do one problem based on this? Okay. So now first tell me what is the domain of this function? Domain is all the values of x that we can take. What is domain? What is domain here? Domain means all the value of x that it can take, all the possible values. What is domain? See, domain you can take any value now. On this line, you can take any value of x. You will get a value of y, real value of y. That means domain is all real numbers. So domain of this function is all real numbers. Okay. What is the range? Range is what? What what is range? When we are finding uh, y is equal to f of x, what is range? What we are defining range? Y, right? So what is the possible values of y? Two. A uh, y you are stuck with two, man. Oh, something is there in that two, huh? Murli, what what is the range? See y. What is y here? How come it be all real number? Y cannot be. Y has to be positive. No, that's what I have defined no modulus function. From zero to infinity, right? Range of the function. See, this is real number. This I'm writing range. R of f I will write range of the function. This means real number. Or so R of f will be equal to zero to infinity okay or you can also write this as all real numbers minus zero uh, minus infinity to zero i uh, will see that huh is this thing clear or not first you can you can write either like this or like this both are correct now what you're saying how come we can include zero right put x is equal to zero 
what we are saying ki either you can put x zero uh, equality sign here you can put either equality sign here or here okay in uh, one place okay so let's put it here for your convenience let's put it here x will be uh, equal to minus x if x is less than equal to 0 if suppose here equality sign is here put x is equal to 0 how much you will get x is equal to 0 that is minus 0 how much you are getting by 0 put here if x is equal to 0 how much you are getting by 0 is it fine you can understand this thing right so the range will y is always positive that means from 0 to infinity y can take value from 0 to infinity all are real numbers and for uh, for which x is defined you have to understand whenever you are writing range y is equal to something x must be defined if you are not defining x that means you are finding just code only not the range okay so that's what is modulus function let's do one problem based on modulus function find domain and range Hopefully, it's can anyone plot uh, y is equal to x minus 1 modulus, whole mod, mod of x minus 1. Can anyone plot this? Modulus function is easy, right? You can understand that. See, this is f of x is equal to this. f of x is equal to y, which is equal to this. And this is your last problem. And then you will go tomorrow and write your test. OK, biology, get out of marks. Huh? The pressure can be it will drag us down. So don't do that. Okay. See <clears throat> how can we write this? We we know the definition of uh, that modulus function, if y is equal to modulus of x, how do we write y? We write it as, it is defined as x if x is greater than or equal to 0, negative x if x is lesser than 0. That's how we define, right? Now, what, what function we have? y is equal to x minus 1 mod. So, how you write? Just replace x with this. x minus 1 if x is, x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, minus of x minus 1 if x minus 1 is lesser than 0. That's how we are going to solve it. Okay. In, we, see, instead of x, we are just replacing x minus 1. All x, I just replace it. I, I'm just comparing. This is the first function that I, last problem that we solved, modulus function. And that's how we are writing this, this problem. Because it is all is inside modulus function. Yes or no? Huh? So that's how we are going to define. Now just write it. Y will be equal to, and you don't have to write the, these parts. You can write that that one. X minus one. If X is greater than or equal to one, minus of. Now this is minus X plus one, right? If X is lesser than, uh, sorry, one, not zero, one. Okay. All right. See, here, see what I did. I just did this X with X minus. And we have got the function. We will write this function as it is. Here, what is x minus 1 is equal to 0 for x is greater than or equal to 1. x minus 1 is lesser than 1 or 0 is for x is lesser than 1. Okay, I just replace that and I can write it like this. Okay, this is the list you will read here. That's how you will read it. Instead of this, you can write i as it. So, x minus 1. Now, we can plot this graph. See, if x is greater than or equal to 1, okay, so let's put x is equal to 1 here. If x is greater than or equal to 1, we have to take this function. If x is equal to 1, what is the value of this function? 0. If you put x is equal to 1 here, 1 minus 1 is what? 0. 
So x at x is equal to one, the value of y is zero. Now all the values greater than so in that case x is equal to ten. So how much you get nine? So somewhere around here, if x is equal to ten, the value of y is nine. So this is ten comma nine. And you have a straight line, so it will be like this. Now if x is lesser than one, that means lesser than this side. So this function is called. So x if if you put x is equal to uh, one, let's say x is equal to one every day, but it will not take the value of one. X is equal to one. How much you are getting? Zero, right? That means it will not take this uh, value because this value is already taken here. And if x is equal to what? X is equal to less than zero. So how much you are getting? One. Y is equal to one, right? So x is equal to zero. Y is equal to one. Now this is your straight line. It's so easy, right? Now is you you see that previous function? It was here. Right? You see, previous function was this. This was y is equal to f of x. Y is equal to modulus of x, and this is y is equal to modulus of x minus. Again, what is the domain? What is domain for this function? All real values. It can take all real values. What is the range? What is the range? What is the range of this function? All the values of y. Y is from where to where? Y is y is lesser than this value. Y is always above this line, no? Zero to infinity, idiot. This is x. This side is x. This side is y. Still, see, the thing is, you have to practice this. It's not like I'm doing few problems and you will understand it. The thing is, you can catch it from here and go and practice some of the problems. You're getting it. Why you are not able to tell? Shyam, Ashwin, Murli, Hari. See, I remember everyone's name. This is the name. Okay, that will be all. See, so directly you can write a domain. Domain of the function will be equal to what? All real numbers. A range of the function will be equal to zero to infinity. See, the range is all the y values. Why is that? If y is, then graph is not going below this line. If this graph is going below this line, then y is bigger. See, here it is taking the value of one. Right here, it is taking the value of one. If x is equal to one, x is equal to one, y is equal to what? Zero. So the least value you are getting is zero. What is the coordinate of this point? One comma zero. Right. We are getting it. So the minimum value of y is zero. It is always greater than zero. Okay. Okay, that will be all for me. So you can go and practice some of the problems. And uh, we haven't done until we are not done with range. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. But at least we have some idea of this function. There is one more thing. Uh, I'll for you both of you. I'm just telling this thing. Greatest integer function. Okay. Again, I'm going to cover this thing. Uh, greatest integer function. The meaning of greatest integer function is represented like this: y is equal to f of x is equal to. In this bracket, we define. Okay, this dot means any function. Okay, this dot simply means any function. And suppose you have five point two. The meaning is you have to take only integer value. Okay, and that that should be lesser lesser than this uh, the value. See. The thing is, the greatest integer of this will be five. The the next integer value you will not take. The integer before that you will take. This is the value of this will be. Like suppose, uh, the greatest greatest integer of minus three point. Okay, that's not right. Three point two. What what is this? How much will be this? This will be three. Okay, that's how we define greatest integer function. Now suppose it is greatest integer of minus three point two. Tell me how much will be this? Huh? How much will be this minus three point two? What I said, you have to take the previous integer value, not the uh, uh, greater than this. It will be minus four. <clears throat> okay, why? Let's see the graph. Again, we are going to consider uh, do it. Don't worry. So from x zero one two three. 
minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 what i said in between these 0 to 1 okay this is the don't ask me why it is like that because this is the function defined like this we can define a function any way we can define a function like that okay so we can define a coordinate system like biology okay so it doesn't matter so zero to in mathematics we can do anything <clears throat> whether it is related to physics or not that uh, job of physicist to do okay not the physician who said physician no no in that that class so zero in between zero to one if x is between zero to one all the values of y is zero like greatest integer of zero point five it will be equal to what zero greatest integer zero point seven five it will be equal to what zero that means all the value of y is zero so you take any value of between this you will always get zero but at x is equal to one the value of y because if one is the integer right so y will be equal to the integer x is the integer sorry one is the integer so value of y will be one now 1.1 is what one greatest integer of 1.1 greatest integer of 1.7 will be what one so all you take all any value till here zero to two any value what it will be it will be one so this is y is equal to one so from here to here it will again be now at two x is equal to two that means greatest integer of two will be what two because it's an integer so at x is equal to two the value of y will be equal to what two so it will keep repeating like this it will keep keep on going like that now let's come to negative side if x is equal to minus 0.1 minus 0.1 somewhere right like what is it if you take the previous value that means it will be minus 1 it will not be equal to zero. okay so it will be minus 1 and it is open interval this is o open interval this is closed interval which we are talking because if you take uh, greatest integer of minus 1 it will it's an integer minus 1 is an integer right so it will be minus 1 greatest integer of minus 2 it will be minus 2 so greatest integer of minus 2 will be minus 2 but greatest integer of minus 1.1 let's say minus 1.1 that means something here some point here x value here Why it will take what value? Minus one. Minus one or minus two? Minus two. Okay. So this will be minus all the values here, and it will keep repeating. Okay. So you will see, you will find a pattern that at x, this is the line x is equal to y. X is equal to y. So at x is equal to y, that means integer value. If x is equal to any integer, y is equal to integer. That means it will always be a closed bracket. It's not at all in the integer. Got it? That's how we define a greatest integer function. This is the graph of greatest integer function. This is x and y and get up. Go. You have to study now. So uh, don't worry. We are going to again study this in detail. I just giving you ideas for both of you because you are having exam, right? Ho hopefully you got it. No. Just take the previous value of integer. Previous integer value. Do not consider. That next will be fine. Always previous. So just write it like this. Whenever it is negative, just take the lesser value. It happens. I also did that mistake that you guys are doing now. For minus one point one, I have written minus one. I know in exam. Yes. I I told you know we will be studying. See there is greatest integer function, there is least integer function, there is fractional part function. Transcendental, uh, transcendental function. These are all transcendental numbers like pi. Okay, these are transcendental numbers, and we are going to study. And uh, you guys, you asked Raghav to take, uh, ask for extra classes. Hari, you will also attend that class. Okay. And please do your NCERT. I am telling you, NCERT is going to happen. No other problem. Okay. Start from NCERT. Study steps by yourself, and let me know if you. I'm not going to do that in class. A lot of people are doing. We want to do that second. So don't worry. Don't worry. Give it some time, and uh, all the doubts. I know it will be. You two get out. Just stand there. We have your answer there. Right, right. Don't worry.
Thank you. 